In the latest issue of Retro Gamer magazine, a magazine that I've been buying for quite a while now, there's a a big article about the Seymour games. And that's actually made me decide to do a video of one or two Seymour games. Now I've got my Amstrad CPC set up right now so it would make sense for me to do them for the Amstrad. So why not do a video of the first Seymour game Seymour goes to Hollywood. Yeah, there's not much more to say, so let's load up Seymour goes to Hollywood. First of all, I tried to load from one side of the cassette, but I got nothing but read errors. But thankfully, the other side works. That's a nice loading screen. Goofy looking Seymour giving us a thumbs up there with a couple of different movie references in the background you might notice. Remember when I picked up the case it was Seymour Goes to Hollywood. The game actually had two names and I think that's just down to uh, miscommunication where the publishers decided to change the name uh, perhaps to make it sound a little bit more global. Seymour at the movies is a bit of an English phrase. The name change wasn't given to the people making the game, so it's ended up with two names. And it looks like it keeps the loading screen in memory, which is kind of interesting. So here we go, Seymour at the movies, as it was also known as. And this is not me jumping around, he just sort of does that on the title screen. So this is Seymour's first day filming his first movie and he's even got his own limo. The music in this game is really quite loud so I had to turn it down quite a lot just so it doesn't make my narration sound too quiet. That's the first puzzle. There's lots of different studios that you can go to, but uh, this starting area is the offices. It's an interesting choice of colours. It's a nice little thing that they've done here where they use Amstrad's Mode 1. There's no limitations on where you can put those colours, but you can only choose four colours. But what they do is that they change those colours from screen to screen, and they also kind of split it so that panel at the top there uses four colours and then the palette changes. There are a couple of characters back here, but I can't progress until I talk to Tarzan. Oh, okay. Right, so this bit. There is a reason why I've had this game for a few years and I've not started playing it yet. This is a maze of almost identical screens 
and each of these doors leads to a different studio uh, so you will need to spend a lot of time here and you will get lost um, I have finally decided to load up the game and give it a proper go I don't expect to finish it during this recording good to try a game for the first time. Now it should be said that they do actually warn you sort of because if you look in the inlay, the, the cassette inlay, first of all one of the selling points is that it has a giant map um, but also the tips that they give you is that you should draw your own map so you don't get lost. And of course today on the internet someone has bound to have made a map which I can find I'm sure But actually, this is a game that I wanted as a child and I really can't remember ever even asking for it. It's kind of interesting because I picked up all of the Dizzy games eventually until games just stopped becoming available to buy. Uh, so we, we never got a copy of that last game. But I had uh, a little mini game that was on the front cover of one of the Amstrad magazines. And I used to play that quite a lot. Rather than being a demo of this game, it's its own mini game with about 10 different screens. And it looks just like this because it's based on this game and it's like a teaser for this game. But I never got this game. I wonder if perhaps I just didn't even consider asking for it. Because <laughs> of course it's a budget game. So, you know, on, on payday, my dad could have got out and just bought it. It's not something we would have had to wait for Christmas or my birthday to get. Well, I'm happy I have it now. And I've got quite a few Seymour games. We asked the, the grumpy receptionist to translate the dictionary to get back here. So there's a little section back here. Comedy Tarzan land. Wherever Tarzan's supposed to be set. And this is just like a treehouse village from the Dizzy games, but the graphics have all been redrawn. I do end up playing this for quite a while. I think I've got about 45 minutes of footage. I'm obviously going to cut some of that out. I don't really make any massive progress. And I think this is a really, really long game. I've read in an article that it's 96 screens, which makes it almost as big as Spellbound Dizzy. And uh, I, I know Spellbound Dizzy quite well because I played it a lot at the time and I absolutely loved it. So I think I would have really loved this game as well had I bought it. I just don't know why we never, we never got a copy of it. Right, so I've looked through the offices now and I've collected quite a lot of items. Now here I thought my game was bugged, but it's actually that item that I've just picked up that makes him invisible. You come to think of it, these games, these games are really quite open. So I suppose people today might, I don't know, but they might compare them to Metroidvania games. You have areas that are blocked off at the start and then you unlock them later. It is a little bit like that in a way. That's a not a completely unfair comparison, I'd say. So I've mentioned this article 
in uh, Retro Gamer magazine. I thought I should get out the actual book and take a look at it rather than trying to quote it from memory. It says here in the article that the maze of studios was actually a kind of in-joke. In adventure games you might move from one location to the other and the the screen is almost identical uh, but there might be uh, a blade of grass that's different and uh, that's the sort of thing that they were going for there and uh, I've never played it before but apparently the first Legend of Zelda game has an area like that and something that I don't really like about this game is the music uh, it's kind of kind of typical 8-bit catchy bouncy sort of stuff but it is a bit grating and um, it's almost like they messed it up a little bit and it must loop about 20 times as I'm doing this playthrough can you see the timer at the top there that little uh, the, the blue panel at the top there 25 minutes so the game keeps track of how long you've been playing the game I've not really gotten anywhere yet have I so I've got a feeling this is a really, really long game. Uh, I'm not playing it on an emulator, so I can't use save states. All I can do, really, is uh, just remember remember the puzzles like this one. Oh, look at that. That's a really cool little animation. <laughs> ah, I don't know if he hurts you. Does he hurt you? I mean, he's in the background, isn't he? So I don't think he'd hurt you. Oh, I think that's really cool. <laughs> I feel like I've been rambling far too much in this video, I'm not talking about the game enough. Uh, the status panel at the top that I was talking about, uh, there's also a number which shows your progress, um, so I'm up to 35. I don't know what it goes up to when you complete the game, you can drop your items in the air there. Now I think the collectibles in this game are Oscars, but you don't just collect them, find them and then you have to give them to each of the movie stars that you encounter. Uh, so I think I'd probably have to give one to Tarzan. At some point you do have to find all of the different studios and find the correct key for the correct door. There's obviously a bit of trial and error involved. There isn't a huge amount in this game that can hurt you, it seems. And you can see I've lost a very small amount of life there. So this is really not so much an action game, but it's definitely a puzzle game. I'm definitely going to go back to this game next time I set up my Amstrad. Uh, or I might even start playing it on the Amiga, because I have a copy of this for the Amiga now. doesn't appear to do anything but I think I'm supposed to go into that machine um, but I obviously didn't put two and two together it's a shame I have to turn it off really because I've found all these items I'm going to turn it off and lose all my progress now Alright, so that is Seymour at the Movies, otherwise known as Seymour in Hollywood. That's the end of the video. Goodbye.